Well, we're trying again. Apparently, we're still having difficulties. If you, uh, we, uh, I think we're on anyway. We're looking at, this is going to be the last story from the little book called Parables from Nature by J. Calvin Reed. We had looked earlier at the, uh, the uh, little book Bird Life in Wington that he had written as well. So this last parable is called Man's Best Friend. This story takes us back across thousands of years to a beautiful place called the Garden of Eden. It was there, you remember, that God placed the first man and woman known to us as Adam and Eve. The man and his wife were commanded to take care of the garden and were told that they may freely eat of the fruit of all the trees that grew there except one. God also gave Adam the responsibility of naming the animals and the birds. One of the animals to whom Adam had given the Hebrew name, Caleb, was more friendly than all the others. Everywhere the man and his wife happened to go, as they cared for the garden, their little, little four-footed friend might be seen trotting along behind. One morning, Caleb found Adam and Eve sitting near the gate of the garden and their faces buried in their hands. Running to them, he whimpered and wagged his tail, his way of asking what was the matter. Patting him on the head, Adam said, you're not to blame, my little friend. It's all our fault. You see, when God put my wife and me in this beautiful garden, he told us that the fruit of the fruit on one of the trees we were not to eat, but we disobeyed him, so now we have to leave. Caleb had been feeling, had a feeling that the man and his wife were not altogether to blame. He was sure it was partly the serpent's fault. He had never cared for the old serpent anyway, and now for Adam and Eve's sake, he wished he could kill him. He started back through the garden looking for him. After a while, he found him at the foot of a tree where he had persuaded Adam and Eve to eat the fruit that God had commanded them not to eat. Caleb bared his teeth, growled, and made ready to fight, but the wicked serpent turned quickly and slithered into a hole in the ground where Caleb could not follow. Back at the gate of the garden, he hurried and found Adam and Eve just going out. Beside the gate, an angel was standing. Caleb dropped his head and started to go out too. The angel stopped him. You don't have to leave, he said. You haven't done anything wrong. You can stay with me and keep on living in the beautiful garden. Caleb looked up at the angel's face. He wagged his tail, gave a friendly little bark and said, but God made me to be their friend. And something tells me they're going to need a friend more than ever in the cold, hard world outside the garden. So if you don't mind, let me go out with them and continue to stay close to them and help them to keep the old serpent away from their door. The angel turned to Adam and Eve. I'm sure, he said, that God will be greatly pleased to hear what Caleb has said because, he continued, God feels the same way himself. Although you have sinned by disobeying God, he still loves you. He's still your friend. He still wants to stay close beside you and help you to keep the old serpent, which stands for sin and temptation, away from your door. Then to Caleb, still waiting, hopefully, he said, Go, little animal, as you have asked. Be known henceforth as man's best friend. Then the angel allowed Caleb to go out of the garden with the man and his wife, and that they might never forget how God loved them. I trust you will never forget that either when I tell you that Caleb's Hebrew name translated into English is dog. Turn the word around, spell it with capital letters, and what do you have? God's own great, wonderful name, God. Jesus tells a parable in the New Testament about a man who had two sons, and one of these sons wanted to leave home, and he did leave home, and after he left home, he wasted all the money and the possessions that he had, and he began to be a slave in another country. Finally, he came to himself and left and wanted to return home and just be a, a slave at his father's house. The slaves at his father's house were better treated than he was being treated. And so he, the Bible calls it, repented. He was sorry for what he had done, and he went back to the father's house, and 
the father received him back and loved him. Jesus was telling the story to tell how God loves us. He is disappointed and hurt when we sin and when we choose to disobey him like our parents are. But they still, our parents still loves us and God loves us and wants us to come back to him. Let's pray. Lord, we're grateful for this day. We're grateful for this story. We're grateful most of all for your love that loves us even when we disobey, we pray, Lord, that you would help us to repent, to come back to you because you're always willing to accept us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.